So this guy, this Antonio Ligabue, hasn't been credited in museums uh, all his life long. So everything that came to Ferrara, and now the, there was another exhibit uh, about him in Parma, comes from private collections. Um, what, uh, is he a contemporary artist or? Uh... He was born in 1899. Okay. and died in uh, 1965 so when I was very little um, but I've heard about him all my life long and I really felt for him because he seemed to have had a very disgraced uh, type of life <laughs> he, he looks very much he looks very much like Gary's brother who was an artist <laughs> well, you will see, he was called uh, in dialect, uh, Tony Almat, the crazy. The ah, that would work too that, with that his brother. That my brother, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say so. Come on. I mean, this is him. Mm. He was born uh, in Zurich, in Switzerland, uh, from an Italian uh, uh, area. Uh, of Switzerland uh, um, native lady. Uh, she was a single mother, apparently. But naked lady here... stripper? Huh? Naked lady, did you say? In, in this area, uh, Switzerland is divided in French, Canton, uh, German, uh, and Italian. So she was from the Italian a region in Switzerland, but she was in Zurich, nobody knows why, at the time she had uh, the baby. And uh, she gave him away for adoption to another couple of people, unfortunately as poor as she was. Uh, people who moved from one field to another to work in the countryside, you know, like uh, freelance uh, <laughs> farmers. How can I say? Mm -hmm. um, maybe Migrant not. workers. What's the term? Migrant workers. Yeah. Uh, pretty much like slaves in Barbados, you know, for the season you were there and then off you were to another field, etc. The baby suffered in his um, very first years of uh, um, rakitism. Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let me search the term. I haven't got time. <laughs> You have all the time you need. I know. <laughs> allora, dizionario. Rachitismo. It says rickets. Oh, rickets, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, right. a disease caused by a lack of what? Uh, malnutrition. Yeah, malnutrition. Yeah, vitaminosis and other lack yeah. of vitamin D and other things. In, until the 60s, uh, we were told a lot of kids uh, had suffered uh, for ignorance of the parents, you know, about it. It was just a matter of adding vitamins, but uh, this woman couldn't, uh, you know. And the other problem was, uh, uh, let me know. Goiter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you will see in his uh, portraits, he has no mercy for himself. He <laughs> goes on describing the self uh, very uh, realistically, but also kind of aware that he's not good looking. He has not a very um attractive uh, look and uh, the thing is he went to school and due to these physical problems um, he was uh, not 
capable to uh, accomplish the primary school. He had only a third uh, class in the elementary school, in the primary school. And uh, also because the parents were moving always from a place to another. When he turned 18, he first, he went first for the first time in a, a manicomial structure for his aggressive temper, they used to say at the time. And by the age of 19, his mother, uh, stepmother, the one who adopted him, having a special relation, very strict with him, but also of love and hate, denounced him to the police, the local police department, because he was harming himself, banging his head against the walls, breaking his nose, etc. She didn't mean to be mean to him, but the police expelled him from Switzerland for, uh, how can I say, aggressive behavior. And that's a, a sketch he did like a character with um, um, a jockey hat. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> but the rest of the paintings uh, or the photos show very well his uh, confused uh, state of mind sometimes. And he had to go back to Italy because in the meantime, his mother, the real mother had married an Italian man from the province of Reggio Emilia, you know, between Modena and Parma, a tiny, tiny city nowadays and the village even smaller. The name of the village is Gualtieri. And mm. it has a little castle, a rock, you know, in the middle of the city. And we will maybe visit it one day. <laughs> Who knows? <I> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he tried to escape and go back to Switzerland once, but was blocked at the border. And uh, after that uh, essay, he, he, he could no more. He lived uh, along the river banks uh, uh, of the Po River uh, in shanties, little huts uh, he could find, even feeding on dead animals. <laughs> Winter was very miserable in the past, very cold and humid, you know, and he had uh, got access to the local um, poor people asylum, but he was a sort of uh, a man that had no peace everywhere. So he was coming and going and then accepting some clothes from those who were giving him. And uh, sometimes, uh, the head of the local carabinieri gave him his old uh, coat, but he was a big guy and instead he was really skin. So he, um, how can I say, filled the large coat with straw in winter to stay mm -hmm. warm. And uh, he loved uh, motorcycles, motorbikes. <laughs> Um, above all, Guzzi, which is a famous Italian brand, and especially because the brand is uh, renowned for the red color. You know, Moto Guzzi was made only in red color, and uh, the the noise of the engine was pot 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 pot, like uh, I would say. Yamaha Enduro in the 80s, uh, the sound of the heartbeat, you know, very mm -hmm. quiet, very nice to hear. So he was in love with those motorbikes and in the run of his life, um, he, were, he was able to acquire 10. Wow. Because at a certain point he became famous 
in a small gang of people <laughs> of art critics Laura, so this is him Laura, what is the name of the motorcycle again? Guzzi. G U double Z I. Ah, okay. Moto. Very famous. Moto Guzzi. Moto Guzzi. Very famous in Italy. Now I don't even know if it exists anymore. But uh, once, uh, until the 80s, it was very, very fancy to have a Moto Guzzi. It was low you know not not very high mm -hmm. and a cruise kind of uh, motorbike not a harley davidson obviously but local something you know were they expensive huh? were they expensive in the 80s um Lots yeah because they were already collectionist uh, pieces oh. okay. and i think they were made in parma or somewhere more than a parma mm -hmm. You know, Emilia Romagna is the so-called motor land. Hmm. They do Ducati, motorbikes, hmm. um, Ferrari, Maserati, uh, Lamborghini cars, hmm. and a lot of famous brand of um, farming tractors. So this is, was just one scenario. <laughs> this is him with a little kitten. <laughs> And you could uh, um, go on YouTube and see some documentaries that uh, this program I use for a presentation doesn't accept, uh, doesn't take movies. Uh, um, the one I mean, uh, I posted on my Facebook a uh, couple of days ago. And uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, It's uh, really special to see. Antonio Ligabue, ecco qua. The Real Naive documentary, it's called. And it's from Rai, R A I, mm -hmm. number three. Rai right, three. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you, you will see. Oh, okay. N A I F. N A I F. Ah. You very naive. The real naive. Yes. That's In the safe. beginning, it was considered naive uh, as a painter, but in ah. reality, you will see is nothing but uh, naive. Anything but naive. I mean, it is um, a dreamer. But uh, it doesn't try to reflect the reality much in his uh, paintings. Uh, this is him again. Is a US, sorry. In the U.S., we call it outsider art. Yeah. Uh, now it's called art brut in French, hmm? oh, cool. like brutal, brutal oh. art. Yeah. Very, very strong yes. impact and he was a, an extraordinary sculptor you will see some sculptures soon and he was making them with his spit and with the um, lime um the crete uh, of the po river the mud of the po river huh? um what? this is him happy or at least concentrating only when he was painting, so that was the moment when he felt uh, at ease. Uh, he obviously had no decent life, no wife, no kids, nothing. And he was begging for love uh, all his life long. <laughs> People were acquiring his paintings, uh, giving him the money for uh, some food at the Osteria. So taking advantage of him most of the times, uh, but some people helped him and hosted him at, ha at home. This is him, you know, <laughs> he, looks, he looked a lot at himself, uh, an incredible number of self-portraits, like Durer 
or many other Nordic, um, Nordic uh, painters did, because in the end he was from Switzerland and he was speaking German. So in Reggio Emilia, in Gualtieri, nobody could understand him. He looked even more crazy or fool because he couldn't express himself properly. So he picked up some dialect expressions, but everybody considered him mentally sick, you know? And when he got some money, he started buying himself uh, um, hats to seem more reputable, how can I say? No? This is one of his uh, self-portraits. Uh, mostly in the fields, uh, he paints himself in the fields with um, butterflies or uh, flies uh, or um, um, dragonflies. And this is the Motoguzzi. You see, it's, it's a low one hmm? mm -hmm. and animals. In the video, you, if you look at it, he's on the river banks of the Po River and he yells uh, at animals because he tries to reproduce their sounds. And he says that he understands animals and he sees them even inside. So he was doing sort of uh, um, special, how can I say, uh, <laughs> strange sounds with his mouth when he was about to start painting, like a ritual hmm? to enter in a psychic state of mind that connected him to the nature and this is him inside with the same uh, wallpaper that you will see in many other paintings and um this here can you see this mm -hmm. is the tower of this palace in gualtieri mm. you can google gualtieri and see how this village is even with a piano here, but he couldn't play piano. Laura, how do you spell that town? G U A L, um, like Laura, T I E R I, Gualtieri. And this is him, you know, he sees himself getting older losing his hair and with some scarf and large coats. Uh, this is a sculpture he did uh, of himself that was in the, in the Diamonds Palace before we closed down every museum a couple of days ago. And this is it, it's really well done. The problem is that the bronze has been obtained after, mostly after his death, because he had no money to bring the Crete to the oven to have it cooked. And uh, not cooking it, uh, it went into powder in many cases. So we lost a lot of his beautiful sculptures. This is him again. And sometimes you see there's uh, a scar on his nose. This is his um, big dog. <laughs> and in the distance, you see, there's always something that looks like a Swiss village. And there's mountains, uh, which are not in uh, Gualtieri for sure, because it's the Padana Plain. So he mixes his souvenirs with his... Uh, style of painting. You see he has a scar here because he kept banging his head against the walls. Uh, sometimes has scars on the side, on the cheeks. Uh, and here is a big fly. Again, Gualtieri, uh, see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a motorbiker type of head. We used to make them a lot in the 
40s, in the 50s with uh, um, sheep's uh, skin reverse, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and you see the mountains uh, and these uh, typical pointed uh, bell towers. This is Switzerland, but he couldn't go back to Switzerland anymore nor his mother, stepmother, ever came to see him. Huh? And again, you see the blood here. And a very sad uh, face. But he looks at himself uh, very honestly. Huh? It's a little bit boring, but you should be a little patient to understand uh, how can i say oh it's not half as boring as watching the numbers tick up <laughs> <laughs> this is way more interesting <laughs> excellent <laughs> see summer everything is green in the fields uh, he loved uh, at least uh, to be in the nature away from other humans uh, and this is when he had to go back to uh, manicomial uh, hospitals uh, because he stayed uh, one time one year about and another time about four years so then his friends uh, uh, made it to take him out and guaranteeing that they were hosting him at home because he had no no place to to go and this problem is serious you see mm -hmm. So this is the type of uh, fabric that my grandpa used uh, too. It, <laughs> it's very, it was very fashionable among poor people. You know, he lived through First World War and Second World War. So very unlucky period, and plus the fascist years. Uh, luckily, he was in a small village where no fascist uh, mocked or took advantage of him because they were sometimes making people drink come se chiama wait <laughs> the bastards um castor oil ooh ooh <laughs> yeah the fascists used to stop uh, ladies in the middle of the street and let oblige them to drink it so that they would uh, shit on themselves in the street just to mock them. Ugh. Yeah. And you see, he's always uh, not smiling. Mm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he looks at himself uh, and this is the maid or the yeah the the waitress uh, in the osteria where he used to go for lunch and he was sort of in love with her her name was cesarina and he was famous because he was always asking her give me a kiss <laughs> <laughs> da mumbez in dialect so there's some paintings he dedicated to her, like this portrait. But obviously the people from the bar didn't want it that she familiarized with him because it was leading to troubles. He was quite good in um, portraying and he portrayed his friends, those who helped him in the ev eventually. And some art critics uh, became uh, quite interested in his work and started acquiring his uh, paintings. Uh, wow. this, this guy was called uh, Mazzacurati and he's the one that discovered him and helped him. Uh, and different people. This woman was the mother of another art critic uh, that helped him and she could speak German because she was German from origin. So the two of them spoke together in German and he felt like a little bit at home, you know? And this is the 
typical coiffure of the 50s. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Uh, even his people, his, uh, his, the people he portrayed are not that smiling huh? in the end. Uh, he asked them to stay normal. And uh, this is uh, another character from uh, Gualtieri, who was uh, um, a fascist, uh, some level. Uh, <laughs> Gerard, uh, we say, and you see the look he posed uh, along with. Uh, and this is uh, a woman that he fantasized, uh, perhaps uh, somebody in the hospital that he fell in love for. But then he started painting animals, uh -huh, as I told you. So in the beginning, it's animals on the Alps, uh, and he is not very talented in the beginning because he was a, a self-taught uh, uh, painter. Um, and uh, he started like painting animals in profile with very little depth and sense of uh, volume. Like in this case, see, the shepherd is like uh, Pan, uh, the god, and the dog just uh, turns a little bit um, and so on. This is a typical farm in the 30s in Italy, in this part of Italy. And horses were used uh, to, uh, hmm, vediamo. <laughs> to plow. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> um, but you see the scenario, the, the background looks always like a, a, a Germanic uh, city gate uh, and uh, pinnacle bell towers, which we don't have. This is more uh, local and he, he keeps describing what he sees. But then uh, this Mazzacurati told him a little bit about painting. He was a painter and a sculptor too. So he started giving more depth and uh, movement to his paintings. And you see the <laughs> Swiss uh, flag, <laughs> the typical village. Uh, this is um, a group of uh, gypsy. Uh, people who had this type of uh, chariots to move around. Uh, and sometimes he was painting uh, uh, signs uh, for Osterie or um, migrant uh, circus uh, passing by. And the way he looks uh, at the bear, you see, is with pity because the, the domatore, uh, vediamo. <laughs> I miss a lot of terms. Yeah. Interesting. Tamer. Tamer. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The tamer is like, looks like a bandit, uh, like a pirate uh, in some uh, cases. You see? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the bear looks uh, sad and scared and armless. And this is one of his sculpture on the theme of the circus. Uh, look how good it is, uh, the mastery shows. Uh, this is uh, about the corrida in Spain. We don't know where he learned about it, but probably on newspapers or uh, not TV, but cinema. It was a very keen on uh, um, summer cinemas in the open. He was going there with his motorbike and giving gas when the subject became, you know, uh, like a thriller or a drama and so on. So he felt for the poor bull in the corrida and also he felt for the animals uh, in the circus. Uh, 
plain to see, very evident. Uh, the side is on. This is again, uh, see, everything becomes more uh, full of uh, colors and also very materic, uh, very uh, thick uh, layer of brushes and color. <laughs> A pig <laughs> from the early paintings in 28, he started. And uh, he had an eye for animals in the woods too. That's quite cute. Huh? It's in between a sort of cartoon and uh, a unique, uh, uh, expressive kind of uh, uh, describing things. This is very young uh, thing, a foal um, from 25, 26. And again, harbor um, worker, working horses. You see, looking at animals, then he starts uh, telling you that cows turn their head and lick their back. And this is more vivid, more lively a sketch. The size is tiny until a certain moment because he had no money to buy canvases. So most of the times he painted on faisite. Let me see. <laughs> How you call it? A hardboard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are uh, some special um, rabbits that uh, he kept uh, just for company, not to eat. He had given them to a woman that was um, making tickets in the cinema. So a woman with a very bad reputation. They were having a lot of fights, but then she was capable to make up with them and, and she was keeping the um, uh, animals for him, these um, rabbits for him. And this is another naive painting, uh, but then he starts uh, comparing some other things. This is his rendering of, uh, look at the little cow, it's called the two mothers. Um, but it's from uh, Segantini, a famous uh, symbolist uh, Italian painter. So you can find better maybe reproductions on uh, the computer of uh, Segantini. And this is his uh, way of uh, <laughs> showing uh, that this subject uh, intrigued him. I like particularly the look of the little calf. Mm. And this is the near village, Suzzarra, in the direction of Mantua, the local uh, weekly market. Simple, huh? Mm. This is flowers. He was not very keen on uh, still life, but he tried sometimes. And this is an interior with a little cat here, <laughs> uh, a web and a bird, and then cats. <laughs> and then cats with a prey. And this starts an entire new um, panorama né? in his painting, you will see. This is a, a drawing very very intense they detected his skills even in the uh, hospital from the very beginning so it's quoted in the medical uh, notes this is a wolf and then he starts becoming better you know between the 30s and the 50s he uh, refines his uh, style and becomes really good. Uh, this is uh, Faina. Uh, is that the Martin or a weasel? A weasel, I think. Yes, uh, from Pinocchio. I'm uh, studying Pinocchio. Oh, uh, yes. Faina. 
Mm. Bene. No? Mm. Vediamo. Dan Martin, <laughs> or, which is a kind of weasel. Uh, it doesn't work. It says there's no connection, but I don't think so. Anyway, a sort of weasel. But look at the um, ability to describe the fur. Huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a, a scene with a more movement, hunting, because he saw people hunting in the Alps and in the um, area of Reggio Emilia, Modena, on the Apennines. And this is a dog in his house. Looks like um, Queen Elizabeth uh, type of dogs. Uh, um, I don't know the name of the Cor type. Corgi. Corgi, yeah. Yes, Corgi. <laughs> Sorry, this is a double again, his dog, you know. And that's a hunting scene. Very simple, but you see the sketch is better already. And then it starts with the sculpture. Look at this. Mm. This is fantastic. If you think he learned how to do sculptures on his own, you have to do a structure to make legs uh, stand up. In iron, you do first uh, this uh, structure and then the solid crete uh, goes on it. Uh, and you have to be skilled to do it. Uh, I tried uh, school, but it's not easy. Yeah. That's a boar hunted by a dog, you see. And uh, again, the same theme. Aina, gorilla. I probably saw movies uh, because he never traveled, so he never saw gorillas in the nature, but he decided to quote the same subject quite a few times. And in this, they have kidnapped and injured a woman, you see, in a sort of uh, negligee. So that's uh, Henri Rousseau, Le Doganier, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that has been compared to him quite a few times, but completely another type of person, a symbolist, uh, a lot more skilled uh, and uh, normal person with an entourage of cultural people, the impressionists around him. So just to show you though, the two animals here hiding are something that uh, Ligabue has uh, uh, Requoted uh, quite many times, and uh, this is a sculpture of the gorilla. This is his own unique nude woman that we know in his production. And another um, German painter, uh, sorry, French painter, has been uh, compared to Ligabue, who uh, is. Uh, his name was Jean Giono. Um, he was a sort of minstrel telling stories like in the Middle Age with canvases and uh, a lot of scenes, you see. And he wrote a book uh, called Le Deserteur. Uh, I don't know how to say in uh, English. Vediamo. Might be, might be a oh, deserter. Oh. Is it is that correct? Someone that runs from the army without yeah. the permit. Yeah. Yeah. Beach Martin. Does a, a an animal with this name exist? Uh, yes, I, I looked at, I had to find out because I'm studying Pinocchio in Italian. Yes, yes. The faine is a character. There's a set of faini. Yeah. And they're in English um, they're called stone martins or beech martins. You see uh, the image? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which is a kind of weasel. Martins are a kind of weasel and the yeah. word weasel is more known that uh, also looked like a, a, a mm, badger mm, si. yeah, yeah okay 
let's go. Another sketch of this, you know, the movement starts. And this is one of his masterpieces. Wow. He obviously was continuously thinking about death and the suffering of animals that had to kill to survive. So here there's a, um, a monkey, but there's also skeletons of humans. So this animal is not evil, but he does what he has to do. Huh? And uh, he started a series of studies with pencil of uh, tigers or farming animals. Uh, also something he spotted in um, books uh, by a friend who had biology books of uh, 19th century, but no image was ever copied. Uh, the critics uh, searched a lot for his iconographical uh, images uh, or uh, origin of his iconography and couldn't find anything. So he had a very sharp eye memory. So what he had seen in the movies in the summer at the cinema stayed in his visual mind, memory, and he could incredibly detail all the uh, parts of the animal that he could sketch. Look at this. Mm -hmm. And there's a sense of energy too. Huh? This is an early painting. And then he fell in love with tigers. <laughs> he says the tiger is the queen. And there you go. The life uh, stories uh, starts to complicate and gets more vivid. It's the time when uh, uh, Italy is trying to have colonies in Africa. So the image of the white man with the black woman is also admitted for marriages just for pleasure. So some of uh, the most cultured uh, journalists uh, of last century had married some young girl, 12, 13, uh, to dump them obviously right after they came back to Italy. So this is uh, <laughs> one of the strong uh, um, images, like a close up that he created, which is this uh, uh, symbol, the most famous part of uh, his production. You see how strong this is, eh? beautiful with the colors. Uh, look at. <laughs> and this is a very special edition. Um, the editor was very, very famous, Franco Maria Ricci from Modena. And the um, articles inside were curated by Cesare Zavattini, who was a famous uh, writer in Italy last century. Uh, Franco Maria Ricci died uh, last September, on the 20th of September, so recently. Hmm. And he created uh, a lot in Italy, above all this... Uh, uh, collection of uh, luxury books for a connoisseur and now the copies were limited so they cost uh, uh, a fortune and he dedicated a number to him in 77 sorry 84 so when he was uh, just recently dead not much this is him Franco Maria Ricci and this is uh, a sculpture of a tiger uh, that uh, um, Ligabue has done. Look how powerful it is. <laughs> this is a, a famous photo. And you see how he tends to identify himself with the animal. Huh? This is uh, like a, a panther or a lioness. And this is the book from uh, 
19th century that his friend gave him to look at. Again, this is one of his sculptures. And you see how beautiful these are. Look at that. Mm. They are incredible. Yeah. I wish I had one. They are not very big like this uh, size. So perfect to put on a piece of furniture in your house, you know, and that's why it has been collected uh, a lot by private uh, people. This is a boar, and you see in the distance uh, some other ones. And this is something that was not in the exhibition, but I just want to show you wh what's in Parma too. And this was in Ferrara, this um, um, chimpan chimpanzee. Huh? It's very well done, amazing. And it's a, a babu. And these are, this is an owl uh, taken, the photo taken from different sites. Uh, a wolf. See the, <laughs> the head. Hmm. And uh, um, a mountain goat that he knew from the Alps. Beautiful, mm. amazing, really. Cows uh, <laughs> with the calf. Look at it. So sweet. And horses, um, working horses. Mm -hmm. This um, part here is something that was common in farms. Uh, uh, don't know the name either. Yoke, I think. Yoke, yes. We call it the jogo in Italian, yoke, yes. Thank you. And that's the other side. Uh, look how mm, powerful are the legs of this horse, uh, furry. And this is a horse uh, in love, he says. That's the title he gave. That's another one. And then eventually he tried probably to mock Mussolini a little bit. <laughs> See, <laughs> with his chin up and this kind of authoritative but a little bit ridiculous uh, um, horse uh, back monument uh, because there are several in Italy and uh, they are all monuments that portray warriors from the Renaissance uh, and probably Mussolini would have loved to have one like uh, Zara or whatever and this is uh, one of his paintings. They become um, really beautiful around the 50s. That's the moment he gains uh, success. And eventually he starts taking parts in um, um, art exhibition, multiple artist art exhibition. And then in uh, 51, he, sorry, 61, he gets a solo exhibition in uh, a fancy gallery in Rome. Look at this. Mm. He didn't want it to go because he didn't like to see other humans. So, but his friends uh, uh, tried to convince him that nobody would have spoken to him, no journalist would have interviewed him, and he would have given, been given a prize. So eventually he went. That's a tiger attacking a gazelle, you know? beautiful. And also the colors of the trees behind they look very much um, lively and uh, colorful. That's a maquette in uh, 
uh, mud, still one of the few that survived. And this is what they had done with others in bronze, in limited edition, hopefully. I think these are kind of uh, unique uh, um, subjects for an Italian painter. <laughs> he was not following any stream, obviously, you no know, trying to copy anybody. He had just this mental type of fantasy and vision inside himself, uh, representing how hard life was for him too. There's no peace even in the savanna. Hmm? And also sometimes he portrays um, chariots uh, um, and another type of hunt uh, like England uh, or Germany mostly. Vediamo come si dice. Hmm. Postilion, the man who rides uh, the chariot, these two guys here, how would you call them? In, in America, they'd be stagecoach drivers. Okay. <laughs> Maybe my dictionary is a little bit old. <laughs> Probably and, British. Yeah, they, maybe British, yes. This, you see different. the man here attacked by the boar, but then uh, the boar has a sort of uh, sad look, like, uh, what have I done, you know, to be you know, <laughs> attacked by all these animals? It looks in between a little simple and very armless uh, and then the the mouth of these dogs is quite incredible that's uh, what you witnessed in the alps that deers in love sometimes uh, fight to the point that they get stuck with the horns and then they become an easy prey for hunting dogs Again, see the same subject because he was selling small paintings to get food at the bar, at the restaurant. And then he's on uh, night birds. He loves uh, owls, uh, eagles, uh, oaks, uh, and always uh, describes with very realistic details what they feed on, uh, a dove or even snakes. Uh, look at the feathers. Uh, it's amazing how it could uh, describe the movements and the, the style uh, with which the animal was hunting. This is a pastel. And that's another vivid uh, scene of a uh, fox attacked by a big uh, oak and also you witnessed uh, the fear of horses uh, during uh, uh, a storm with the lightning see that's uh, another one the humans are like uh, mm, cartoons or uh, yeah how can i say a small um, magazine characters and he was painting also uh, fantastic uh, castles based in switzerland uh, with a princess uh, running uh, from the castle on a chariot uh, and blah 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 see a beautiful lake look at the reflex of the waters he does it with a certain skill and that's uh, a meeting between um, an elegant soldier and two beautiful ladies uh, in a 
Nordic country. This, this type of architecture doesn't belong to Italy, obviously. Again, um, thieves. Uh, you see, it's a um, hmm, guato, come si dice. <laughs> <laughs> um, well <done>. painting. <clears throat> an ambush, yes. It's an yeah. ambush. There's a fake dead body in the street. And you see behind the tree, there's uh, somebody with a rifle that is uh, waiting for the chariot to pass by to stop it and to rob them, obviously. Again, the symbol of Switzerland. And this is a fantastic Siberia. In the end of his career, he started painting these storms in the snow with a bear attacking a Troika, a slide run by Tartar people, fantasious locations and ice and snow. Look at this uh, with wolves, uh, a pack of wolves. Uh, horses go crazy. And this is beautiful because there's uh, um, a slide with uh, men armed, but the mother hypothetically is losing his kid to the wolf, you see. And this is very psychological, I think, because he kept uh, trying to explain himself uh, how come his mother lost uh, tracks of him, control of him, gave him away, as it would have been uh, um, kidnapped by ferocious animals. Uh, look at the tracks of blood of the horses and the fur of the wolves. Uh, and this is a close-up of the baby stolen. So he has to continuously explain himself uh, how his life has been so miserable. This, that's uh, one of the last uh, paintings. Uh, obviously, he never traveled uh, to the Arctic Sea, but he describes uh, a white uh, bear attacking a, a seal. Um, but uh, the penguins do not belong because they only live on the South Pole. So it's a mix of what he saw in the films and what he tried to uh, tell us again. So I wanted to let you meet another painter from the Apennines above Modena, very close then to where he lived, called Gino Covilli. You can look for him on the internet and he lives uh, now. He's very old, but he's younger than uh, Ligabue and uh, he became uh, successful in the last uh, 20 years. Uh, he does very big uh, paintings because he has more money than uh, Ligabue had. Uh, and he still describes the same um, hard life. Uh, I, I personally like him a lot. I saw an exhibition about him um, like uh, 10 years ago in Modena and it was a revelation. Gino Covilli. C O V I L I. Ah, okay. And that's uh, his uh, uh, description of uh, animals and uh, farmers. These huge hands, you know, suffering for work uh, stress. And that's uh, <laughs> the deserve, well deserved. Uh, um stop after hours the days of work okay that's uh almost uh, everything i hope you liked it and uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least you have a few more things to 
to distract uh, yourself and uh, search for, okay? Yes, I'm yeah. doing a puzzle of Venice. <laughs> what? I'm doing a puzzle of a map of Venice. Oh, <laughs> excellent. But it's okay. much better than watching numbers. <laughs> Next time you come, we go to visit another sestiere. Okay. <laughs> we visited the Dorso Duro the last time, so we can go Castello or um, Canareggio in mm -hmm. the future. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. Let Ciao. me know as soon as you know the result uh, for real, because in Italy it comes a little bit uh, late.